This planet is the largest in our solar system. It is a gas giant planet with many cloud bands and the Great Red Spot, a massive storm that has been occurring for years. So far, scientists have confirmed that Jupiter has 95 moons. Callisto, Io, Europa, and Ganymede are the largest and most famous moons. They are known as the Galilean moons because Galileo Galilei discovered them in 1610. Many smaller moons that orbit far from this planet are among the other moons. It is possible that the number of moons will continue to increase based on advancements in telescopes and technology. The physical characteristics of the Galilean moons, Io, Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa differ. All of Jupiter's moons are subject to the enormous gravitational pull of their parent planet. Because of its enormous gravity, Jupiter is able to orbit about 100 moons, which is approximately 318 times the mass of the planet Earth. The gravitational force of Jupiter prevents its moons from escaping into space and instead keeps them in their orbit around the planet. Planet Jupiter exerts a gravitational pull on its moons, which causes them to endure tremendous tides. Volcanoes on Io are constantly active because of the internal heating caused by tidal forces, and this is the most obvious example of this phenomenon. According to the theory of orbital resonance, the giant moons Io, Europa, and Ganymede orbit Jupiter at intervals of 1.77 days, 3.55 days, and 7.15 days accordingly. Orbital resonance is the word that describes this phenomenon. When Ganymede orbits Jupiter once, Europa completes two revolutions and Io completes four revolutions. This causes the orbits of Ganymede and Jupiter to be mutually locked and stable within each other. Despite the fact that Jupiter is the ruler of these moons, they do not remain completely motionless. When the planet's orbit is subject to gravitational interactions with its moons and other particles in the vicinity, there is a possibility that the orbit will occasionally change significantly. There is just one moon in the Galilean system that possesses its own magnetic field, and that is Ganymede. However, not all moons have magnetic fields. In spite of the fact that Io does not possess its own magnetic field, the magnetic field of the moon is affected by the powerful magnetic field that Jupiter possesses. The interaction with Jupiter's magnetosphere causes light auroras to flow across Io. Observations have shown that the magnetic field surrounding Europa's moon is not stable, despite the fact that Europa's magnetic field is continuous. It is possible that there are oceans of salty water beneath the surface, which could be responsible for the generation of secondary magnetic fields and electric currents through their presence. Every other moon in the solar system does not possess its own magnetic field. Ganymede is the sole moon that does. Specifically, this is because it contains a core of liquid iron and nickel, which acts as the dynamo of the Earth. A very powerful magnetic field is responsible for the formation of a tiny magnetosphere surrounding the moon. Even though it does not possess a permanent magnetic field, Callisto exhibits the same kind of interaction with Jupiter's magnetic field as Europa does. The evidence presented here demonstrates that salty waters beneath the surface can produce a secondary magnetic field. In conclusion, Ganymede is the sole moon within the solar system that possesses its very own magnetic field. Currents forming in the deep oceans can produce secondary magnetic fields on Europa and Callisto. There is a substantial amount of interaction between it and the magnetic field of Jupiter, despite the fact that it does not possess its own magnetic field because it can provide clues about the internal structure and deep waters that could support microbial life. The magnetic field that was discovered in recent months is highly important. The moons Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto have different physical characteristics. For example, the moon Io is closest to Jupiter. Hundreds of volcanoes in the solar system are active and most of them are still active. 
Its surface has hot lava and sulfur, which give it red, orange, and yellow colors. The extremely high temperatures caused by extreme geological activity result in the absence of water or ice. Due to the somewhat elliptical orbit of the moon, Io, it experiences fluctuating gravitational pulls. Io's gravity pulls the moon more strongly as it approaches Jupiter, causing the moon to stretch and contract as if it were being squeezed. The extremely high interior is produced through this process, which melts the rock inside Io and generates its own magma. Jupiter, Ganymede, and Europa attract the moon Io. These moons have additional orbital disturbances, Io, which increase tidal heating and maintain a warm core. Most of Io remains as molten magma due to continuous tidal heating. The pressure from this magma causes Io's surface to crack and erupt, producing hot lava with temperatures between 1300 and 1600 degree year, making it one of the hottest places in the solar system besides the sun. Io's volcanoes have more than 400 active volcanoes, with the largest volcano, Loki Patera, capable of producing lava up to 200 km long. Volcanic eruptions can send gas and dust into space up to 500 km away. New lava constantly fills the surface of the old craters. Therefore, as a result of the tidal heating caused by the gravity of Jupiter, Europa, and Ganymede, Io has active volcanoes. This causes high internal heat, a layer of molten magma, and continuous volcanic activity, making it the most geologically active body in the solar system. Smooth and shiny ice covers the surface. The surface features long ice cracks but very few impact craters, suggesting that it is constantly young. There is a belief that beneath the ice, there is a vast ocean of liquid water. Its surface has a frigid temperature, around 160 to go. Although the oxygen atmosphere of Europa's moon is very thin, it does not support life on Earth. On the contrary, the chemical and physical processes occurring on the surface of the water across Europa lead to the formation of oxygen. The Earth's magnetic field constantly illuminates Europa. This radiation originates from high-energy particles, electrons and ions, that strike the surface of Europa's ice. These particles are primarily frozen water, H2O. Air molecules break down into hydrogen, H2, and oxygen, O2, when high-energy particles collide with the air. Lighter, hydrogen escapes into space quickly. The thin atmosphere across Europa still contains heavier oxygen. Europa's ice might contain additional oxygen. The released water vapor can decompose if there is cryovolcanic activity, ice volcanoes. This contributes to the oxygen content in the atmosphere. The oxygen atmosphere on Europa has a surface pressure of only 10 to 12 bar, much lower than that of Earth. It is too thin for human respiration, so it cannot support life directly. Chemical processes on the surface generate oxygen, even though plants or living organisms do not produce it. Therefore, Europa's atmosphere contains oxygen because Jupiter's radiation strikes its watery surface, breaking apart air molecules. The presence of oxygen provides an intriguing clue about the possibility of life in its subsurface ocean, although this atmosphere is too thin to support life directly. Now if it produces a lot of oxygen, it is very thin on Europa. The atmosphere can thicken if it continues to produce a large amount of oxygen. However, Europa's gravity is only 13% of Earth's, allowing it to maintain a dense atmosphere for a long time. If oxygen dissolves in the subsurface oceans, it might help microbes to grow. Bacteria and other primitive life forms may have the ability to use oxygen for respiration, as occurs in Earth's oceans. This would increase the likelihood of extraterrestrial life beneath the surface of Europa. When the increase in oxygen interacts with Jupiter's strong radiation, auroras will appear in Europa's atmosphere. Jupiter's magnetic field can attract and ionize some oxygen, altering the planet's plasma composition. 
excess oxygen can react with surface carbon, sulfur, or nitrogen to produce new compounds such as ozone, O3, or carbon dioxide, CO2. The origin of life can be linked to complex chemical reactions caused by organic materials found on the surface or in underground oceans. Larger than the planet Mercury, Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system. Ganymede is the sole moon possessing a distinct magnetic field. The surface of rock and ice has many craters and long grooves. Ganymede may have an underground ocean containing liquid water, similar to that found on Europa. Some people believe that the moon Ganymede has large oceans of liquid water beneath its surface. The heat generated by tidal heating contributes to the formation of this liquid water source. Although it does not experience as much tidal heating as Io, Ganymede still receives some energy from the gravitational pull of Jupiter and other moons, Europa and Callisto. This attraction causes internal friction, which generates heat and helps maintain some water in liquid form beneath its ice layer. The surface of Ganymede has a heavy and thick layer of ice. This high pressure causes the ice beneath it to partially melt, creating a salty ocean within it. This phenomenon also occurs in Earth's oceans, where high pressure helps maintain liquid air at low temperatures. The massive size of Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system, hinders its formation process. This internal heat helps maintain a layer of liquid water beneath the surface. As a result of the research, the oceans of Ganymede may contain the same salts as the oceans on Earth. With the presence of salt, the freezing point of water decreases, allowing it to remain liquid at low temperatures. According to information obtained from recent studies in the Galileo mission, the internal structure of Ganymede may be visible. The upper layer consists of a thick ice surface approximately 150 km long. The underground ocean consists of liquid salty water only 100 km deep. The rocky mantle consists of a mixture of rock and minerals, and the metal core consists of iron and nickel, which are responsible for generating its own magnetic field. The magnetic field of the moon Ganymede is the only moon in the solar system that has its own magnetic field. The magnetic field within the molten metal core is similar to Earth's magnetic field. Like Earth, Ganymede has a core made of iron and nickel. It is believed that the outer part of this core is thicker, while the inner part is still liquid. The dynamo effect occurs when molten iron moves within the core. Electric currents generate a magnetic field. Ganymede traps heat as it shifts and mixes with other objects. This heat still exists at this time and helps maintain the core in a semi-liquid state. This allows for the formation of a magnetic field. Although Ganymede does not experience as much tidal heating as Io, Jupiter's gravitational pull still has a small effect on it. This energy helps keep the interior of Ganymede hot enough to maintain its liquid core. The small magnetosphere surrounding this moon is created by the magnetic fields of Ganymede and Jupiter. Although this magnetosphere is not as strong as Earth's, it protects Ganymede's surface from radiation. Because salt-containing liquids can conduct electric currents, this magnetic field indicates that there are underground salty oceans. Callisto's moon has a unique geological past, a lot of impact craters, and there may be oceans below the surface. One of the most powerful things in the solar system is Callisto. This demonstrates that the surface has remained relatively unchanged since its formation. The Valhalla crater is one of the most well-known craters on Callisto. It is the biggest and has a layered ring pattern that is 3,800 kilometers wide. This is the Asgard crater, which is longer than the others at about 1,600 kilometer and has a stacked ring shape. Europa and Ganymede have active volcanoes that can erase old scars all the time, but Callisto does not. Earth's plates and mountains that move around Callisto are not there. The rock and ice that make up its surface are more than 4 billion years old, which is almost as old as the solar system. Unlike Europa and Ganymede, Callisto does not get scorching during high tides. This makes the inside of it more stable and cooler. 
Researchers say that Callisto's core may have gone through small changes, such as the formation of liquid oceans deep below its surface, even though the surface is not active. Data from the Galileo mission show that electric currents change the magnetic field around Callisto. This suggests that there are conductive fluids inside the moon. This makes it possible that there is a layer of salty water below the surface of Callisto. If there is an ocean here, it is 100-150 km below the ice, which is deeper than either Ganymede's or Europa's ocean. The water on Callisto stays liquid because of the high pressure inside and the salts in the water. The moon's freezing point and temperature inside go down, but not as much as on other moons. To gain a better understanding of the composition, geology, and potential for life on these moons, several space missions have been and are being conducted to study Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. The first missions to fly past Jupiter and its moons were the pioneer missions that studied the moons, namely Galileo 10 and 11. It sent images from close range from 1973 to 1974. In 1979, Voyager 1 and 2 took high-resolution images of the Galilean moons, discovered the still active volcanoes on Io and the icy surface on Europa. Galileo, 1995 to 2003, was the first mission to enter orbit around Jupiter, learn how Io's volcanoes work. On Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa, you can find evidence of underground saltwater oceans. It shows that it has its own magnetosphere, as indicated by the measurement of Ganymede's magnetic field. The main mission from June 2016 to now is to study Jupiter and collect data about its moons as well. The mission aims to capture images of the ongoing volcanic eruptions on Io. NASA is expected to launch a mission similar to Europa Clipper that will study Europa in 2025 and 2030. NASA will study the composition of ice and the subsurface ocean to search for signs of life. Radar allows us to observe the construction of Europa's structure. Similarly, the European Space Agency, ESA, expects to complete JUICE, a mission to study Ganymede, Europa, and Callisto, by 2031. Orbiting around Ganymede will be carried out by the first mission to orbit a moon other than Earth, Subsurface ocean life is the subject of your research this month. To achieve this objective, it is important to understand the process of moon formation, whether it can support life, and how the solar system functions as a whole.